Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Well, welcome back. We we love our animals and, and we wish we could talk with them, like really have a conversation. Well, obviously you can't, but they can pick up on what you're thinking and you can from them. And she is somebody that practices that as an animal communicator, but also helps people do that to some extent on their own. We're going to talk with her. Uh, I'm going to share an experience based on what I learned from her in just a couple of minutes. Marianne McKiernan is our professional of the year and she's back with us. How are you? Hi, I'm great. So I took what you said last time we got together and mentally attempted to send a picture of what I wanted my dog Tanner to do. Mm -hmm. We're outside waiting for him to go to the bathroom a little tight on time i'm walking around like tanner just go potty come on and you know he's got to <laughs> sniff everything and like he's like then then sometimes he's like well, i'm going over here and he starts pulling the leash and i'm like and he's he's wonderful and sweet but when he wants to go over there he's not stopping like i got something over here i'm like tanner we don't have time i have to go to work you know just go potty so i don't have to clean it up later so i mentally sent him a picture of him going pee pee just mm -hmm. literally just focused on sending it now the reason i think this really worked and it, it worked a number of times was he was already focused on something else he, he was not having it like i'm i'm busy over here don't bother me and as soon as i sent that image maybe a second and a half later he turned around and went to the bathroom and I truly believe, based on what you described, that I sent that message to him. Then I was driving, and a it was a possum came across the road and was like in the middle of traffic. And I'm like, what? First of all, what are you doing out? It's not dark. Second of all, go back. And I sent that picture in my mind of going back to the woods. Go back to the woods. And I just pushed it in my mind. And sure enough. Awesome. Turn around and went back the other way. I didn't beat Fantastic. the horse or anything. Um, you know, some skeptical people may say, you okay, you know, it's a coincidence, but it, it wouldn't have happened that fast. And especially with my dog, I know my dog, like he's no, I'm not. He, he was basically saying in his motions, no, I really want to look at this over here. I don't get out enough and I have a mission. I want to sniff around. This is what I'm doing. But he stopped in his tracks and went to the bathroom and then was cool with, you know, I'm, I'm good. Let's go back in now. I don't have a doubt that I sent a message to him. Uh, yeah. is, is that what you feel and do? Yes, because sometimes the words aren't working, right? So you saying, come on, go potty, go potty. We're in a hurry, whatever, isn't getting through to him. So you send the picture. He's like, oh, I get what you want. Okay, got it. And the same with the possum, because you couldn't have talked to him. He was out of range of your voice, sure. right? So you just send a picture. I do that a lot when I see dogs in cars and their windows all the way down and they're like leaning way out. Oh, that yeah. makes me so nervous. Me too. And I'll, I'll send a picture to the dog and I'll say, hi, look, I know that you like the air and I know that you're having fun, but I want you to put all your weight in your butt. I want you to lean back in that car. And often they will kind of look startled and they will do that. They will back up. So it gives me a little moment of peace. I don't know what happens after they turn the corner and I go the other way, but mm. at least I've told them it's unsafe for you to be leaning forward, lean back. Yes. And at least you feel you did something. And right. I, I get it. My dog, you know, I'll put the window down. He'll run up to my lap while I'm driving. Not the best idea, but you know, I'm not in like heavy traffic, but you know, he's, He's out there, but I I have a hand on him. Like I will never yeah. let him a, on his own. Like if I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't even, I couldn't focus. You know, you're worried about that. Um, how can we harness the power of sending that message? These are just, you know, a couple of examples, but what else can we do uh, and how can we do it? I think just practice, just like you did, you know, just kind of experiment with, hey, I want my dog to go to the door right now to go outside and just send that picture and see what happens. Or, sorry, I have a cat that's trying to help today. Um, <laughs> send a picture, send a yes, picture. Yes, I've been sending a picture. Go sit on the bed. It's not working. Cats are different. Um, mm. So send a picture of 
maybe you're thinking about going for a walk. So start thinking of that. Think about putting on your shoes, picking up the leash, going to the park, and see if the dog suddenly appears at your side going, hi, are we going for a walk? I'm wagging their tail. Um, and do that, you know, like you said, with the possum outside, maybe with a squirrel. Hey, go back over to that tree because my dog is going to come out in a minute and chase you, you know, but just practicing. That's the big thing. You just have to practice. Tell me about cats. Now you say cats are different. It doesn't work in the same way. Uh, I have two cats wondering what, what you even think is possible. I think it's possible with them. I just think that they are so much more independent sometimes and they, I think they take the information in. They just maybe don't want to follow the information. You know, it, okay. we joke about cats being more independent. It doesn't mean necessarily that they aren't super friendly and super cuddly. This one that keeps trying to jump in my lap is very cuddly, but he's also got a mind of his own and it's very hard. You will never see a service cat. It's very mm. hard to train them to do much of anything. You know, they just want to do their own thing. So even though I'm sending him pictures to please go lie down on the bed, he is standing here at my shoulder, just waiting to jump in my lap again. <laughs> but that's he, not, not to say he's not receiving what you're sending. Yes. Just, just doesn't want to. Right. Right. Mm. But you can, I've worked with cats, for example, that um, maybe there's an issue with the litter box. And it turns out that they want a covered litter box instead of an open litter box. So I send them a picture mm -hmm. of the covered litter box and I say, is this what you would be more comfortable with? And they're like, yes, I feel too exposed in the open one. I want a covered one. And so I say, okay. And I tell the person, he really would be more comfortable with a covered litter box. Go ahead and try that. And so they do, and the cat uses it. So I've sent the cat a picture the cat has said, yes, that's what I want. Um, and, you know, so those instances, it works that way. Interesting. So even you know, centering on cats for just a moment, do you get, can you communicate? You know, do you feel that you can communicate with cats or is it kind oh, of like sure. a hit? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. I have a lot of kitty clients. Um, <laughs> uh, Big, I'm a cat person and a dog person. What can you tell us about cats? Obviously independent and will do what they want to do when they want to do it. But that communication, what are some of the things that you've gotten from, from people, people's cats you work with? They tend to be a lot more concerned about other others in the household, whether it's other cats or other people. They tend to be a lot more sensitive to energy. So mm -hmm. a lot of what I get is um there's a new being in the household whether it's a new baby or a new animal and so we do a lot of negotiation of okay this new animal is not going away your mom really wanted to adopt another cat so let's negotiate how you can live peacefully together um or maybe there's a move and they've moved from one house to another and the cat doesn't like the new house because it doesn't have the same views or the same windows so we have to negotiate how the cat can still look outside but you know maybe they have to build a taller cat tower or open up some windows upstairs or something um cats it seems take a lot more negotiation hmm. i'm i'm more of a mediator it seems with cats <laughs> okay all right no i get it all right um and uh, no surprise you know i do have one cat that um he does, I want to say, listen, he has his own agenda, but his, in, his agenda is love. He just wants food and love, like truly love. I mean, he just, he wants to be in your face and to be hugged and he wants to kiss you. Like I'll walk into a downstairs bathroom just to get away sometimes. And before I can close the door, he jumps up on the vanity and he's like in my face, like, yeah, I'm here. And he's like reaching out. Come on, come on, give me, give me, give me. I love it. It's great. There's no complaints whatsoever. Um, but I think he picks up on my energy cause I'm, I'm mushy with him back, but then our other cat, eh, not so much, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, I don't send those messages to them. Like I send to the dog. So I, sh I really should try that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see if you have to send them in a slightly different way. H how do you mean in a different way? Well, maybe a different kind of a picture. Like it wasn't working with me to send this cat a picture of the bed. 
So I finally told him, look, I really need you to leave me alone for the next 20 minutes so I can do this podcast. And he left. So more direct communication in this case was what I needed. That being said, dogs or cats, is it better to, instead of just keep telling them, come on, you know, Muggsy, no, please not, I'm not doing that, not here up again, blah, 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 you know, repeat yourself over and over again. Is it just better just say it once and then just vibe it, picture it mm -hmm. and send it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. otherwise we end up sounding like that Charlie Brown noise, you know. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what they hear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care. And All they right. roll their eyes and say, "Ah, oh, that person again." Yeah. Just yeah. I'm. I'm not. I'm. I heard it the first time. I don't really care. I'm not going to listen anymore. Keep talking if you want. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Uh, yeah. The only word that really works for me around uh, my cats is out. Like if if it's time for them. Like he'll go in my daughter's room, likes, you know, hanging out. He just loves going in there. Sometimes she's had enough of him. And I said, you want him in here? No. I'm like, out, out, out. I should send the visual because I get tired of hearing myself. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So picture them going out the door with the word. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what else can you tell us about this? I find it fascinating. Now that I've tried it and it's working, what else can we do to, to communicate? Um, I'm trying to think what else I do to communicate with them. I ask lots of questions. So sometimes they'll send me a, a picture of something that makes no sense. So I was talking to a dog once who kept showing me cupcakes. And I'm like, does this mean anything to the person? And I said, cupcakes, why am I seeing cupcakes? And she said, I have no idea why you're seeing cupcakes. So I thought, okay, this is just very random. And then she let me know about a week later, she'd been talking to her husband about her conversation. Turns out he took the dog to work every week. And on Fridays, one of his coworkers always brought in cupcakes for her coworkers. And of course the dog never got a cupcake. And they always told him, no, cupcakes aren't for dogs. And he really, really wanted to taste a cupcake. Mm. It was driving him crazy. So that's why I was getting the cupcake. So sometimes I get images that don't make any sense to me and I try and explore it with the animal and I just get a word or a picture. So sometimes I need the person to help me interpret something. And some people interpret that as me sort of hunting for clues. They want to kind of quiz me on that. You know, they, they make it like a test. And that's not the point of this. The point of this is to explore the communication with our animals, right? So that's kind of a funny little thing that we could explore together. Why are you sending the cupcake? The family ended up loving that. They thought it was hilarious. There's always a reason. We just don't know the reason sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Is this easy to learn? With practice, yeah. You just have to be really patient and really trusting that what you get is real because it's so easy to think cupcakes. I didn't just hear that. That's crazy. And not say it out loud. And that's the hard part. If you're working with somebody, especially somebody you don't know, because you make yourself very vulnerable saying your dog just said cupcakes. I don't know what that means. Um, you know, the person could laugh at you. They could say, that's crazy. I don't know what that means either. I think you're a fraud. And, you know, they could hurt your feelings. They right. could, make you feel bad so you just have to really keep practicing keep trusting what you're getting and um, keep being vulnerable because that's how you learn and that's how you open your own heart so that you get more information is it best to practice with your own animals or does that sometimes get a little jaded because you know you're, you're working with your own and should you try it with others like how do you test it out I think it's best to try it with others because with your own animals, you know them so well um, that, you know, if you think, oh, he wants to go for a walk, you know, well, yeah, it's seven o'clock. We usually go for a walk at seven o'clock. Um, I think it's better to do it with somebody's animals that you don't know very well so that you can get that validation so that when they when you say I talked to a St. Bernard, for example, yesterday, and I said, this dog is pure love. All this dog wants to do is be with people. 
she's not really interested in toys. She's never really been interested in a lot of play with other dogs. She's wants to be with people, wants to open her heart to people and heal people. And the guy said, yeah, that's very true. So that's how I get the validation and know what I'm, I'm really connecting with the animal. Um, and it's hard to connect with your own animals, especially if it's something important. So if my animals have a health issue and I'm really concerned, I'll ask one of my animal communicator friends to talk with them because I'm too close to the situation. It's like, if you're a doctor, you don't want to treat your own kids, right? That's just not a good idea. Right. Right. Um, what are some reasonable things? Like I'm, somebody's listening, watching, going home tonight, going to be sitting on the couch. Animals are walking around. Where do you start? I think you start with something simple like um, let's play and imagine their favorite toy and see if you can get them to go get that toy or pick up that toy. Okay. Maybe you have a couple toys on the floor, so make it a little easier for them. Yes. So they've got maybe their favorite ball and their favorite stuffy, and you're picturing the little stuffed animal. And you think, go pick up that stuffed animal. And you just keep picturing that and picturing the animal, the dog picking it up and bringing it to you, or the cat picking up their favorite little stuffed mouse and bringing it to you. Hmm. It, you know, it's funny. If, first thing I think of is, I don't have any toys around because they all push them underneath the ca the couch or the, ah. or the table. So thank you for saying that. I would t I would pull some of them out and just line them up there and then visualize. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, go pick out your favorite toy. I want you to go pick out, or maybe just visualize. Go pick out the green one, or <laughs> go get the green one. Yeah, yeah. And see if they go for that one. Yeah, and they're probably telling you, "Hey, Dad, all our toys are under the couch. Could you go get them?" And I do, and they put it under there again, and it's a lot oh, yeah. of work. <laughs> That's part of the game. <laughs> I guess. I bet they're not intentionally doing it. They're just swatting it around, and then it goes underneath there, and then they look at it, and then they're trying to get it. Um, but I'm going to try that tonight. I'll report yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I guess also, be like you said, be patient. It, it, it may not happen on the first try. It may, may take right. a few before you know the connection is made in that regard. Once you start doing that, and then you start noticing the results – does it get easier for them yes. to hear you, if you will, uh, and for you to talk, if you will? Yeah, it does, okay. because now they're tuned in to you. Um, I think it also helps if you're in a quiet space, so you don't have distractions of the television or the radio. You know, it's just quiet, and there's not a lot of other people in the room or other animals. It's just maybe the two of you, because um, you got to work up to a place where it's really distracting. Mm. Um, it's better if you're very quiet and maybe you just sit for a minute with the animal and just kind of breathe and just get in tune, you know, kind of get into your heart, get the animal quiet and then start doing that. That And that's why I said you're, you're just laying on the couch. So, you know, TV down, not a lot of activity going around so that there can be a focus on whatever you're vibing for them to do. Uh, right. can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looked, it, it's fun. Yeah, it fun. is. It really is. What was your aha moment, Marianne, where you realized for the first time, this works? Like with me and my dog going to the bathroom, that was my, we got something here. I see yeah. this. What, do you remember it for you? Um, a couple. One was um, in a class. We were to go out. We were at a, a a rescue farm and there were all kinds of animals and I was with a horse and the horse came over and stood next to me and he said listen with intent and that was a very powerful message for me and it's guided me all the time since then that I really practice that every time I'm having a consult I'm listening with intent to what the animal is telling me. Um, and then the second one was the one of the very first clients that I had where I was actually getting paid to talk to their animals. We were talking um, with one of their dogs that had passed on and she was in spirit. And I felt like she was right there with us. She just felt very present. And she said, I tell them I'm with them by jumping on the bed. I thought, OK, so I said that to them. And they gasped and said, yes, we have felt her in the middle of the night. 
jump on the bed and we both sat up and turned on the light because we were so certain she was there. And of course, we didn't see her, but we certainly felt her. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. I can do this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was an aha moment. It, it. I feel like I can do this. Like we've spoken before and I, I totally believe and get everything you're saying, but now seeing it, how this is done and I'm just scraping the surface. I mean, you run layers deep um, in, in having experience and, and faith and trusting in what you're receiving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What do you think the percentage is where you can't make a connection? Yeah. The, 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 the cat is just not having it. Somebody's cat is just, it's not working. Yeah. Maybe 5% of the time. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And I don't charge. If someone says, you know, I just don't feel like you're really connecting with my animal. Or I say, I'm not getting anything in this consult. I'm just getting absolutely nothing. I don't charge. Gotcha. Yeah. And I have a hard time. Um, I have a client who has feral cats around her house. And mm. it's really hard to connect to those cats because she doesn't really have a connection with them. She puts out food for them and she cares about them deeply. But she knows she can't bring them in. She knows she can't, you know, sure. go out and pet them. They're not interested in that. So it's really hard to connect with them. And so, you know, often I'll say, I'm not getting anything from this kitty today. I'm really sorry. Every once in a while, I'll get a little snippet of something. Um, but mostly it's just very fragmented. You know, mm -hmm. I might get a picture of, yeah, I'm I'm under a bush today in your yard, but that's it. Can you send a message to them? Let's say feral cats. And we've talked about wild animals before um, that you can, you can communicate with them. Can you send a message, you know, uh, whatever you need them to know, like find shelter or, or, or what if you have feral cats, you love animals, but there's a lot of them. I don't need them around here. Could you send them a message to, tell them to find another home? I think you could. That might be tricky. What I've been doing with these cats is telling them that her yard is a safe space because she has neighbors who do not like them. Oh. It's kind of the opposite. So she puts out water all the time. She lives in Arizona, so it's hot. Oof. So she always has water. Um, so I'm always letting them know her yard is safe. If they feel uncomfortable in somebody else's yard, they can come to hers for safety. Um, and she has one particular very elderly cat that she does feed um, canned food. So I'll tell that cat, you know, there's canned food for you in the evening. Come back over here. Mm, it's and so cool. she often shows up, but not always. I, I, I'm i not skeptical, but my, my game changer here was that possum that crosses wild animal. And it could have went anywhere, but at the moment I was sending the signal like it was almost like an sos yo go <laughs> yeah and i think it's because you were you were so focused and so in the moment and you really really meant it and it was urgent and i think that possum was like oh i need to go this way yeah yeah i feel the same way but it was after my dog if if that situation didn't present itself and and work the way it did at that moment i would be wondering well, yeah, i don't i don't think i would have had the 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 confidence to try and vibe a a possum crossing a road. Um, fascinating. Can't honestly, I can't wait to lay on the couch tonight and start <laughs> and do the toy test, if you will. Uh, yeah. yeah. Marianne, uh, thank you for all the insight. This is sure. amazing, but this is just part of what you do. And of course you can do this virtually. You can do this without, without even having the animal in the room. Right. That's the amazing part. And of course, communicate with maybe animals that have passed on, uh, to the other side. What's the best way to find you? Uh, my website is www.telling-tales, and that's T-E-L-L-I-N-G-T-A-I-L-S.com. And my phone number is 303-757-6918. And as you said, if you can't make a connection, if if somebody's pet is the 5% that it just didn't happen to happen, uh, you don't charge them. Right. Oh, it's you have nothing to lose. And most times, if not all times, it gets validated. You'll come up right. with something to show that, yeah, there's no way you would have known that unless the animal was telling you. 
Right. Awesome. Thank you uh, right. again for being here. You bet. Thank Appreciate you. It. We'll be right back. Bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicapped accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.